what, what the mate is talking about. What's up, family? A 19-year-old from Florida who had recently graduated high school and was on his way to California on a football scholarship to play ball is dead. Brian Brown was shot three times in the back by someone he met on Craigslist. His family said that he had listed some video games and a PlayStation on Craigslist and he went to meet the guy with his girlfriend. Apparently, some type of scuffle broke out. I guess they tried to jack him. He ran, they shot him in the back. Cold blooded man. All of this over a PlayStation. A PlayStation and some video games. Well, PlayStations go for nine days. 300, 400, 500, a few games. Let's round it off. Let's just say it was a top of the line PlayStation with some super turbo stuff going on. $1,000 for the games and everything. A life? Really? Where do these people come from who value life so cheaply? Where do they come from? I mean, it's like people not even thinking. I mean, we're talking about life. We're talking about a human life. Does anybody ever stop to think, okay, whatever I'm going to do, let me see how much money I'm going to get out of this. Okay, in this situation, I'm going to take a life for $1,000. If and when I get caught, let's see, $1,000 for the year, that comes out to somewhere in the neighborhood of Let's say, what is that, about 90 bucks a month. Let's say, let's round it off. Let's say you end up with a 20-year sentence. Let's say the judge don't really give a damn and, and, and give him some leniency. Let's say it's 10-year sentence. So for every year that he spends in jail, he made about a hundred bucks. Lost his freedom. Got a jacket on his back. Took a life. Missed out on God knows what, especially if they have children. For a hundred bucks a year. That's basically what it amounts to. Now, by all accounts, they said this kid was a good kid. They said that everybody liked him. He was very likable. The father, Craig Brown, said that he had, what did he say, two to three hundred kids, two to three hundred people come by his house, giving him hugs and offering their sympathy. They said he was a good kid. Even his coach spoke on him, said he was a a great athlete, a lot of potential. So we lose another young person who we could have used. And we're stuck with the low life who murdered him. We had a productive member of society that was taken away from us and we get stuck with the low life who is still on the loose. There needs to be some type of PSA for doing business on Craigslist specifically. Doing business on the internet 
at all, but specifically Craigslist. It's like criminals live there. They live there. So this is just not a video where I'm just going to be talking about the, the case of a person losing their life. It's another person losing their life. I got some insight on dealing with Craigslist because one of the things, one of the streams of income that I do have is money that I make from buying and selling cars. So I deal with people on Craigslist from time to time. And anytime I'm dealing with them, I always deal with them in a very public place. Very public, where I know that there's lots of cameras and there's lots of people. And the reason why I do this is because things are less like something bad is less likely to go down when there's a lot of eyeballs in place. Somebody that's got bad intentions are uh, least likely, less likely to try to pull something. If you're selling something like a PlayStation, games, anything that you can pick up and grab and walk into a building or whatever, an office, you need to try to meet people inside of a mall, not at the mall, but inside of a mall inside of an apartment complex. If you live in an apartment complex, inside of the lobby. If you can avoid meeting people at your place of residency, period. You don't want them to know strangers. You don't want strangers coming the way you lay your head. But if you feel fairly comfortable you can have them meet you in the lobby of, let's say, your apartment complex, if you have a lobby. Have them meet you inside the mall, in the food court, in the heart of the mall where, every, where people are going to be. Things are less likely to go wrong. You have to take that extra step. Hell, there are some places around the country where police stations will allow you to make Craigslist exchanges at the police station. If somebody wants to buy something from you and they don't want to meet you in a secure place, if they're hesitant about meeting you at a police station, that's probably somebody you shouldn't do business with. They don't want to meet you in the mall or somewhere that's high visibility. You, you just cancel the transaction. It's not that important. Your life is worth a lot more. So besides meeting people in uh, high visibility places, I decided to give you guys some more tips that I think that you could find useful if you're gonna be doing business on Craigslist. So first and foremost, you wanna always meet people in places of high visibility where you feel like there's cameras around, where the activity is being recorded, where there's people around, high visibility. Meet in public places with high visibility my number one spot for meeting a strange ad, if I'm selling something or I'm buying something off a of Craigslist, I'm going to meet in the mall, meet inside the mall. Okay. Number two, never give out your real contact information. Craigslist has a feature where it allows you to use their email by proxy feature. So you don't have to give out your personal email address. You don't even have to give out your phone number. Never give your personal information. 
to these strangers, to strangers on Craigslist. There are criminals on Craigslist that is hunting every day, looking for victims. Never give out your personal information. Never give out real contact information. Never give out real fi your financial information. Sometimes these people on Craigslist that don't mean you any good will try to get you to fill out a financial uh, contact information where you put in your financial information in there. They may try to get your credit card information. Don't ever do that. Don't ever do that. Avoid using, this is a big one, avoid using money transfer systems. You know, avoid using money transfer companies like Western Union and MoneyGram. Don't do that. Because once you send that money, money gone. Money gone. And you definitely don't want to send that money to somebody that you've never met before. You don't really know very, very well. That money be gone. And you definitely don't want to send that money if you've never seen in person what it is that you're purchasing. Because people can go on the internet and find a picture anywhere and post it and make you think that what you're buying is the real deal. So never purchase something that you haven't physically seen and that you don't you can't see in person. Never do that. Never buy something without seeing it first. So that goes back to what I was just saying. Make sure whatever you buy that you see it first and make sure that you can lay your hands on it when you're moving your money. And the last thing that you want to do is remove geotags from pictures before you post them on Craigslist. Photos you take with your G that are uh, GPS enabled can get you in a world of trouble because it tells the person that don't mean you any good where you're at. Some of those photos have uh, geolocations on the heading. And then the meta tags and the criminals know that they see what's going on and they're going to try if they, if they got anybody got bad intentions that means they're getting an idea of where you're coming from where you're at so you never want to do that anytime you meet somebody you make sure you always take somebody with you if you can take somebody with you most of the time me being who i am I feel like I can handle myself. So I normally, if I take anybody with me, it's going to be Nina Ross. Because I don't mind putting them, put, put some in, inside of them. I don't mind that at all. But still, I still take precautions. I still will meet a person in a public place. Make sure it's high visibility. For the youngsters out there that's listening to me, if you got that pistol, just know that if you run up on somebody to jack somebody and they don't cooperate, chances are you're going to squeeze that trigger because it's way too easy to do it. If you squeeze that trigger, chances are they're going to catch you. If you're with somebody, the chances are of them catching you are going to be even more likely. Factor that in. Factor in that sentence they're going to give you. Because it's coming. Guaranteed. Those people in the courts, man, they ain't got no problem giving you a 50-year sentence. No problem. They need to fill those jail cells. And you are a prime candidate. They need your body, warm or cold. Take your pick. Best thing you can do, man, is just go the straight and narrow. Just be legit. Get it the right way. Get it the honest way so that you can be on the ground and so that you can enjoy your family. If you got any kids, 
you want to be sure that you're raising them and not leaving it to some other man. Everybody else, y'all be safe out there. And like they say in boxing, protect yourself at all times. No more talk. What, what the mate is talking about. Yeah. Order, protection.